next I want to go into how this technology has changed because this is really critical when it when it comes to how it affects our health how you can identify it in a grocery store or your farmer's market even um, based on you know labeling and how is the government ensuring that these things are safe? Those are the three main categories I wanna talk about next. So Joel, to do that, I think we should briefly mention what traditional genetic engineering is. So up to recently, whenever someone would say GMOs, what they were referring to was called traditional genetic engineering, okay? This is like um, BT corn or BT cotton or Roundup Ready soy. These are some examples of traditionally engineered uh, crops. So in brief, what you have are, you have the, we have genes and those are just segments of DNA and the DNA gets converted into RNA in the body this is, happens in, in humans, plants, animals. So the DNA gets converted to RNA. Specifically, it's called messenger RNA. Then it gets converted into a protein. Okay, so from DNA to messenger RNA to protein. The proteins are so important because they are the body's workforce. They run almost every function in the body and, and on the plant. Um, so in the body, they run functions like carrying oxygen, digesting food, helping neurons fire signals, repairing tissues. And what happens with genetic engineering is it targets this process at different points, sometimes by editing the DNA itself, adding in new instructions, sometimes turning on and off genes, and sometimes it will intercept that messenger RNA to silence the gene. So in traditional genetic engineering, it was designed to do two things, and these are on more of on the targeting the protein level. Number one, it could add a protein. In this, this is the one that most people are familiar with. So in this method of adding a protein, one or more genes would be added to the plant to force it to make an additional protein. So you'd add a DNA to a plant it would turn the plant would turn that into our a messenger RNA and that would be turned into a protein. And that would cause some kind of trait or, or function of a plant. Now, what most people probably don't know, because at the time, the government and the companies who were making these genetically modified plants, they told us that the technology was accurate and safe. What most people probably don't realize is that one of the most common ways that they made these plants express these new proteins is by using a gene gun. So they would literally shoot DNA particles, you know, at, at the cells, um, at, at these um, cell samples, and they would insert often at random sites using a bacteria. So the donor DNA could be from the same species or a different species. Uh, but they would shoot this gene gun at it and one cell um, would take it up. Like once, once one cell would take up that target, um, that cell is grown into a whole plant and that new trait would ride along with it. Example, Roundup Ready soybeans. These are glyphosate resistant. Um, so the government, as we already know with this one, the government actually had to change the regulation to keep Roundup Ready soy on the market because you had to spray a ton of glyphosate on it, right? And, and the, the level of residue was too high because the technology failed. So the government had to actually change regulations just to keep it on the market. Um, another example is the BT corn. So this is where you have corn that has a bacterial gene, we, if for brief, we call it the BT gene. That gene is added to the corn's DNA. It forces the corn to, to express that gene. So that, that BT gene, it will be turned into messenger RNA and then will be turned into the protein, which in this case is a pesticide. It's called BT toxin. It is a pesticide. That means that corn is making pesticide. It became a pesticide factory. When an insect bites into the corn, it ingests that BT toxin, which kills it by rupturing its gut. So the problem is we eat that corn too, 
And now we're we're seeing that it could be associated with leaky gut in us. Okay, so these those are two of the most well-known examples of a traditional genetic engineering of a crop where you've added a new protein. Another example is the flavor saver tomato, which had delay softening. Um, some people might be familiar with that one. The second, the second um, job or the second way that you can have traditional genetic engineering is to actually reduce a protein. This is less well known in terms of the mechanism that people most usually aren't aware of it, but you've heard of it before because the most well-known example of this type of technology is the Arctic non-browning apple. Remember those, Joel, those are like, you can buy apples already pre-sliced for you now in these plastic packages and they don't brown. So, and that's because um, they, they contain a gene. Uh, so apples contain a gene that produces the enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. That causes browning when an apple is sliced or it's bruised. What scientists have been able to do is silence that gene, which slows down the browning process of these Arctic apples. So just in brief, what a scientist can do is they can take the DNA and they can insert that into the plant. So in this case, the apple, and then the plant itself makes the messenger RNA and now what happens is the plant's machinery will chop up that messenger RNA, right? Because it has the instructions to do that. It chops it up into little guides. They're kind of like, if you think of a military scout, like looking for an enemy, it chops up and makes these little um, me uh, messenger RNA guides, or sorry, RNA guides. And they seek out the messenger RNA that you're trying to attack and silence. They either cut it up or they block it. And so when that message, when that RNA message is blocked, the cell can't turn that RNA into a protein. And so in essence, you have silenced that gene because the goal of a gene is to create the protein, right? It's going through messenger RNA is trying to create this protein that has some kind of function in the cell. So if you block the messenger RNA, you block the protein. Um, so you, in essence, silence that gene. Now, a lot of times it's actually not totally knocked out. It's just knocked down. That's why eventually the apples will brown, but it will take them a long time. But so those Arctic apples are an example of that. And that technology is called RNA interference or RNAi. And I want you to remember that because there's a very concerning version of it that we're going to talk about in just a moment. That is called RNA interference, RNAi because it's interfering at the level of the RNA to silence the gene. Okay. You know what's interesting, uh, Cena, in the, in, the apple, in the apple world, I can tell you that uh, one of the ways historically people knew that an apple was better than one apple better than another apple was how fast it browned. If you get, if you get a really, really good, um, you know, compost grown uh, apple, it will brown way faster than a chemically commercially grown apple. And um, uh, apples that we have here, I mean, you almost can't you almost can't eat the apple fast enough to stay ahead of the browning. And uh, and 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 that that is indicative of um, of the fact that it is highly digestible. Oh, wow. So once again, we're now going oh, yeah. not only uh, uh, away from nature. Digestibility. Yeah, we're going against yeah. digestibility. Wow. Which is really concerning given the skyrocketing of chronic illnesses and digestive issues sure. in our That's country. Yep. And now yep. we're just making the food even harder for our bodies to digest right. and assimilate. That mm. See, we're just going in the wrong direction here. Yeah. In, in general, that, that's what this podcast, the bottom line is we're going in the wrong direction, <laughs> turn the <laughs> ship around. And that's why we're doing this. We're trying to help you uh, to know what's happening, to be able to identify it, to yeah. choose what we are designed to eat, you know, yeah. for your health and your family's health. Um, yeah. Sadly, there, the, F, the, the EPA has approved um, the first plant incorporated RNA I trait um, with insecticidal activity. And that was done actually in 2017. 
and that's the um, Smart Stacks Pro. And that one was uh, to control Western corn root rot, root root rot. Um, so that so this so in other words, I'm not just explaining things that are you know in the labs that scientists are doing. These are being grown, and people are being are consuming these things. People and our animals. So the EPA is hailing this technology as a win for the environment because they're saying that it doesn't add even trace amounts of the chemical pesticides to the environment or to the food that's produced from the plant. And they're vowing, and the manufacturer is vowing that this RNAi doesn't affect the, the corn plant or whatever plant it's, it's happening in or the people or the animals or the insects who eat the plant. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, Joel, maybe I'm cynical. I do not believe them. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I wonder, I wonder why. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even just, you know, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of this. There's, there's literature s- suggesting the opposite. Um, the, the RNA guides themselves that are used to locate these target genes. If they're off by even just a small amount, it can bind to and silence an unintended gene. Right. There are a lot of genes that are conserved across species. And there are studies that are cautioning that there there are um, there's potential for these off target effects that could extend beyond the, even the closely related inse- insects. They could extend beyond to soil microorganisms and pollinators. Um, so it's 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 um, uh, and 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 I forgot to mention the RNAi could even be passed down to other generations. So there's no recall. When you're dealing with genetically modified organisms, there's no way to recall it. Once it's out there, it's out there. Friends, want to dive deeper into our thought-provoking conversations? Become part of the Beyond Labels family today by joining below. For any gift amount, you'll get access to the full uncut episodes. Every contribution, whether big or small, keeps this podcast going. So join us and expand your Beyond Labels experience. Thank you.